When people record their first podcast or live stream with multiple people, each with their own microphone, many times they're pretty disappointed in the sound at first, and there are a variety of reasons why. The main thing is that they generally complain that, gosh, it doesn't sound great. It sounds like there's a lot of roominess, a lot of noise, and things like that. Let's talk about some of the things you can do to make it sound better. Now, the first thing that becomes a challenge when you have multiple microphones and multiple people in the same room is that you get microphone bleed. So when I talk into my microphone, my voice is also picked up by the other microphones. The microphones are very sensitive, and that's the first problem. So when you listen back to that, you're hearing me through this microphone, but you're also hearing me through the other microphones as well. And that results in something called comb filtering because my voice gets to this one first, and even though it's just a very short number of milliseconds later that it gets into the other microphones, that creates constructive and destructive interference with the audio waveforms, and it does not sound amazing. So now one other thing that happens in addition to microphone bleed and comb filtering is that when you have multiple microphones in a room, you pick up more noise. And the simple reason for that is that you have more microphones to pick up the room noise. So that's another factor that you need to take into account. We're, we're right next to each other. So we're not, we're not, there, there are a couple of things we're not doing right here. Uh, or not, not that they're not right, that they're just less than optimal and it's resulting in this sound that's not great. So my voice is, as you can see on the meters here, when I talk, both mics are picking me up almost the same. Um, and then when Danny talks. And when I talk, the same thing happens. Yeah, so her voice is bleeding over into my mic. My voice is bleeding into her mic because we're sitting next to each other as opposed to using the polar pattern of the microphone. There are a variety of things you can do. Let's run through them. First thing is very simple. Each person should have their own dedicated microphone, ideally, and they should be talking into the microphone quite closely. They should be within about 10 centimeters like I am right here. That's going to be ideal. I think what you're going to find as well when you have multiple people in the room, especially if you don't have like a treated, an acoustically treated space, a dynamic microphone for each person may be a better choice. And the reason for that is not because dynamic microphones are better at rejecting noise in and of themselves. It's because dynamic microphones are less sensitive and generally people have to work up closer to them to get a loud enough signal. So that's a useful thing. So I would recommend generally going with a dynamic microphone, especially in untreated spaces and have people work up close to them. Second, optimize the position of the microphone. So if I have two or three people, I'm using cardioid microphones. These are microphones that are sensitive on the front, but reject most of the sound from the back. So I can use that to my advantage. If I'm gonna have a couple of participants, I might have the microphone here, and then I could put one participant there and one there, so that when they're talking, they're talking into the back of my microphone. So my microphone's gonna pick up less of them, and vice versa with all the people around. So use those polar patterns to your advantage. It can make a big difference. and What's more, the farther away the other people are, so if you space your people out, there's going to be less of that microphone bleed from the start. So you're not going to struggle as much with the microphone bleed and therefore the comb filtering. So that's another thing you can do that can really help. Now, the next thing you can do as well, if you have something like, say, a Rodecaster or a Mackie DLZ or other mixer of any sort, is you can actually ride the faders. That is to say that when I'm talking, we're going to have my fader at zero, at unity, which means all of my sound is getting recorded. And then for the other people that are not talking, I might pull their faders back. And what that does is that reduces that effect of microphone bleed and comb filtering even more. Now, the problem with this approach is that it's hard to do, especially if you are the host of the podcast, plus you have guests or co-hosts. You're trying to kind of stay focused on the content, and at the same time, you're trying to mix. It's hard to do. If you can, it's best to have a dedicated person do the mixing that isn't a participant in the podcast or is someone who maybe doesn't participate quite as much as not hosting it. So that's something to consider there. But that's not the most ideal. There are other things you can do as well. You can go into post-production and make it sound a lot better there by essentially doing the same thing that I just recommended with your faders on your mixer. You can, in post, do one of two things. You can do what's called railroading. Railroading is essentially what they do, dialogue editors do, for, for film and television shows. And that is to say, when somebody is not talking, they basically just cut that portion of that person's audio completely out. They just cut it out. It doesn't need to be there. It's not contributing. It's not helping. It's just adding noise. So they just cut that portion out. And then when they talk, of course, they leave that part in and they fade it back up. 
Another thing you can do to achieve that same effect is what's called automation. And it's basically like writing a fader in your digital audio workstation app, your audio editing app. Or you can even do it in your video editing app where you essentially pull the levels down for the people that are not talking and then push them back up right before they start talking. The problem with this approach is it's really tedious. And if you have an hour-long podcast, for example, three participants, that's a lot of work to get there. So <laughs> may not be the best option for everybody. But there's another option that can make things somewhat automated for you, and that's using an auto mixer. An auto mixer essentially does that same thing. It takes, it, it evaluates all of the microphones, and it says, oh, the loudest, the, the, where I'm getting the strongest signal, where the person is currently talking, I'm going to leave that one on its fader at zero. And for the other people that are not talking, I'm getting a little bit there, but not nearly as much, so I'm going to pull their faders down. It automates this. It does it for you. Then as soon as one of these other people start talking, it raises their fader and it will lower my fader. It does this on an automated basis. And there are some really great auto mixers out there that work really, really well. They don't generally miss. And so that is another option. Now, this can be found in a number of different devices. So if you have a Zoom F4, F6, or one of the F8 recorders, it has an auto mix feature. The Mackie DLZ Creator has an auto mix feature. That works about the same as the Zoom F-Series auto mixers, and they're okay. Not the best, but they, they definitely help. Sound Devices Mix Pre-Recorders have a plugin that you can purchase to run an auto mixer on your Sound Devices Mix Pre. That one is actually really effective. I found that to be one of the most effective. And then also, if you go up into the more professional mixers, I have a Allen & Heath SQ5 mixer that does it. Uh, the sound devices 833, 888, and Scorpio all have a couple of different forms of auto mixing, both what they call Mix Assist, which is what the Mix Pre has, but they also have a very special one called Dugan Auto Mixing, which is many people say is probably the best auto mixing in the industry, but you're getting into a lot more money there. But if you're on a podcast, one of those options there, one of the Zoom F series recorders or a sound devices Mix Pre or a Mackie DLZ can really make your life easier. And then that way you don't have to do all that extra work in post. And for most cases, you can just take that mix track and just listen through and make sure everything else is good and you should be good to go. Let's get you some samples. So earlier we had a sample of what it sounds like when you're not doing any sort of mixing, you're not moving the faders, maybe the microphones are not optimally positioned and you're getting lots of room noise and also microphone bleed. Now let's do another example where we do that same thing, but we turn on auto mixers of a couple of different sorts. We'll start with the Mackie DLZ and then the sound devices mix pre. Both of our mics are completely open, ready to capture sound. And I'm gonna come over here into the auto mixer. Go ahead and turn it on. Now go ahead and talk, Danny. Hi, we're doing a sample podcast and I'm Danny. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, you bet. So here it's doing a little bit. And if I pop back out to the main screen, you can see it's, it's helping a tiny, tiny bit when Danny talks. So now I'm talking and we're seeing how this auto mix feature works on this device. Notice that when Danny talks, it picks up a lot less of me. Go ahead again. All right. So I'm talking and I'm not sure exactly what to talk about, but hopefully you can see the effect of the auto mix feature. There we go. So the auto mix helps just a little bit on this device. You also get to set priorities. So you can choose which microphone should be considered highest priority. And that's why when Danny talks, it's using less of my mic. In fact, if I put me on low, <laughs> it, it does too much. That's not enough. Yeah, need, that was a big cut. Yeah, I need to at least be at medium here. But now when, when we switch back out to the main view here, you can notice, especially when Danny talks. So now I'm talking and maybe you can notice whatever Curtis is trying to point out there. Yeah, it picks up way less of her voice on my mic now. So... This one works okay. It's not the best auto mix in the world, but you can see how it helps a little bit. And again, we could use all those other things we talked about to help improve the sound. We could sit opposite each other. So we use the polar patterns of our microphone to reject each other as we're talking, uh, reject the sound of each other while we're talking. We can actively mix so I can pull Danny's fader down when she's not talking and likewise my fader down. When I'm actually, when I'm talking. So those are the things we can do. Now, this one's tricky. Um, of course, we said you can do some things in post-production that's similar to doing the active mixing like this, but those are some samples of what you can and can't do to make your podcast sound better. So thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me on. 
Um, but we also have an auto mix feature here. And let's just kind of pop in here. And we're going to go to the inputs menu to mix assist is what they call it on the sound devices. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Okay, now mix assist is on. Do you, oh, you don't hear any difference, do I you? I do not hear any difference this time. <laughs> but now, that's only because I'm not wearing headphones. Right, that's one of the downsides. So using a recorder like this, um, there's only one headphone jack so that we don't both have headphones in this case. We could run the headphone out to a uh, like a headphone amplifier that has multiple outputs and everyone could hear from there. Um, we don't have that set up here. But I am hearing a little bit less noise this way and a little bit less of the uh, dishwasher, which is still running. It's, it's, uh, it's better, it's cleaner. And, and I would say that this Mix Assist is, uh, Mix Assist on the Mix Pre, which is a plugin that you add on to the Mix Pre, is more aggressive than what we heard on the Mackie. Would you say that using Mix Assist with that device is easier than turning the knobs? On this device? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. The knobs are kind of crowded, so the fa these are the faders when you have it in advanced mode, and it's pretty crowded. It's not as easy as a linear fader like on the Mackie. So if you're going to do it manually, um, with the Mix Pre, you can connect a control surface, which would make it a lot easier. With So you can have you know proper linear faders with more space. Um, but you can use these knobs if you chose to, if, you, if your fingers are not too big. All right. One thing you'll notice, too, is that when I'm talking, it is, it's choosing my mic, and then when Danny talks... So when I'm talking into this fine microphone, and I'm talking... And I'm not sure what to say, but anyway. Yep, it's it's choosing Danny's voice. So it's, it's it's able to detect who's talking currently, and it will fade the other microphones back. There's all the, there's another trick that the Mix Pre can do, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate that here, and that is use something called noise assist. So you can hear our dishwasher for sure now. It's, it's empty. It decided right now. to empty, yeah, to yeah. drain out. <laughs> so if I come in here to the system menu, and I'm going to go into noise assist, and I'm going to go ahead and turn noise assist on and that's supposed to be a quiet dishwasher yeah it is it's a it is yeah i mean it is a quiet dishwasher there are just times when all dishwashers are noisy exactly so i'm going to turn it on for the left mix right there here is the left noise assist so right now i have it set to do 6 db of noise reduction let me just pull that up. So I'm going to bring that back up to zero. So here's with no noise assist right now. No noise assist at all. Yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn that to minus, uh, maybe minus five. And then Danny, you go ahead and talk for a moment. Is minus five a big reduction? Pretty, pretty substantial. Yeah. You can definitely hear a difference with a minus five noise reduction. What are the increments that you can change it in? Decibels. Is that... By ones, or is it yeah. a different uh -huh. interval? Yeah. One dB in each in each setting. So there's an example of noise assist. Now, Emma is in post production is going to take this and just play back the left channel where we applied noise assist, and so you can hear what that sounds like. And that's an example of some of the things you can do to reduce the overall noise and make your podcast sound a little bit better. Let me go ahead and turn that noise assist back off. Pop back into the system menu into noise assist. And we will just turn it off altogether. So here's with auto or mix assist, uh, which is an auto mixer, but no noise assist. Okay, so now it's just mix assist. Exactly. So we have just one thing. Yep. And I think that sounds a lot cleaner, a lot uh, more isolated than you would hear in our previous setup where we were intentionally trying to do almost everything wrong. All right. Well, I trust your judgment since I don't have headphones. So. Okay. Thanks so much for coming on our podcast today. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to make your audio much better. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.